the show from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with Peter Antonio, who is a psychic. How are you? I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm brilliant, thank you. So tell us about your show. Um, so it's sort of a fusion of stand-up comedy and mind reading. So throughout the show, people are tasked to think of certain things, and it's I'm sort of tasked to both read their minds and make it sort of funny. So um, the second half of the show, people get to think of questions they've always wanted to ask a psychic but haven't had the opportunity to. And it's my task to try and figure out what the question is and then provide an answer. So they can be anything from sort of, like, oh, should I take that new job to what colour is my underwear? And sort of we've got everything in between. Cool, brilliant. So were you born psychic? Something, as something that you've always had? Or was it something you learnt? Or yeah, I think it's sort of a ton. I think it's like sort of musical skill. Like everyone could do it, but yeah. some people are just sort of naturally, naturally skilled in it. So I've spent a lot of time with sort of, sort of mediums and a lot of time with psychologists and magicians and just sort of pinched things from all of them. Mm-hmm. Sort of smashed it all together in order to create sort of mind reading so you think that people can learn to be psychic yeah i think like it's it's something that anyone could be taught to do over a long enough period of time so have you performed at the fringe before yeah this is my sixth year at the fringe um i used to run an improvised comedy troupe and then i sort of went on my own because organizing other people is far too difficult so have you done lots of comedy stuff before um yeah it's mostly just the improv that i did so a lot of the show is is based heavily in that sort of improv style so so it's different every day and I'm just working with whatever the audience has because I can't decide what's going to be in their minds so we just have to roll with whatever they decide that day. Cool. And you've got another show as well which is just for two nights? Yeah, just for two nights. It's a, a seance so I thought it'd be fun to to give someone sort of an interactive horror experience. So it's people come and sit around the table. There's only 12 seats and it, it sold out in June So and then we just see whether they experience stuff and it's sort of me slowly suggesting things to them and seeing whether their brains take them away in the dark and see how spooky it can get. Cool. So you've performed at the Fringe a lot, so do you feel like it's evolved a lot since you first started performing here or is it sort of still the same sort of thing? Um, I think it's, I think the free Fringe has changed the face of of the Fringe because people instantly know that they can go and get quality entertainment for free so they want to know why they should be paying for your show a little bit more so the sales become a bit harder but Generally, it's still, there's still a lot of, sort of new, exciting acts coming up, and yeah. it's nice to see both the good things, and it's always fun to see the terrible things as well. I, it's not a fringe unless I've seen something that is the worst thing that's ever existed. Yeah. So where are both your shows on? Um, they are both at Sweet Venues, which is down on the Grass Market, Venue 18. My one-man show, Comedium, is at 10 past four every day till the end of the festival, and the seance is on the 16th and the 27th, but you can't come because it's sold out, so... Oh. Sozzles. Um, So, are you going to do a little trick for us? um, Are you prepared? uh, We can... We can try something? We can try something. Do you remember the name of the first person you ever kissed? Ooh, um, Alex. Okay, if you tell me, that is not mind reading, that's just listening. But um, I'm glad (laughs) glad you're paying attention. Uh, Good, okay. um, Do you remember the name of your first serious boyfriend? Was it Alex? Or was it someone else? Oh, controversial, right. I'll give you a piece of paper and a pen. I'll hold the mic, don't worry. Um, will you write down their name nice and clearly so in a moment we could show the camera if we need to and then fold it back into quarters? And this just helps you focus your mind on that information. This might go horribly wrong. I've not had anything to eat yet today. There's, okay, fold it up. Yeah, just fold it, yeah, so that... Because otherwise that'd be looking, which is yes. a, another one of the senses. Um, slowly work our way through. Right, I want you to imagine that I am your first serious boyfriend, okay? Okay, and I want you to just picture him for me. Would well, he have short blonde hair? No, he has no hair now, if that makes you feel any better. Um, he was a bit of a dick, wasn't he? Can we say that? We can't say he was. He was a bit mean, wasn't he? Was, uh, a little bit, yeah. A little bit, okay. Um, I want you to imagine that he's kissed you and run away and you're screaming his name in your mind again and again and again. Like, you want to say it out loud, but complete poker face. Don't give any, like, keep that. Because you're sort of... Like a fish having a fit. Um, okay, we will we'll try this. Edit that bit out. Um... <laughs> Did you have a name that you called him, but then like he had like a real name as well? Did you have a nickname for him? Yeah. Yeah? If I said Back to the Future to you, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Did you call him Marty? 
Yes. But his name was Martin. Yes. Good. <laughs> and he's here today. He's not. That would be. <laughs> oh, that'd be horrible. <laughs> no offense. Um, he's, he's, he's dead now. That was. <laughs> he's not. He's not. That he's was not. amazing. <laughs> that was really really cool. <laughs> Well, so yeah, if you want to go see him, you know what it's on. Thank you very much for coming and speaking to us. I'm Lucinda Shell. You've been watching Waffle TV.